Welcome to my studio. I'm Bonnie Lahoda, and I'm going to take you through the process of creating a digital fresco. This is an image transfer onto a calcium carbonate based gelatin uh, surface and it's really easy to do and it's fun. Uh, you can do a lot of these in a day. To begin with you're going to need to assemble some supplies. The first most important supply is to get some Medex boards. These are dimensionally stable and they will not warp so that's why I use the Medex. You could also use uh, very thick half inch plywood and I choose to use birch plywood. If you're going to use plywood you're going to need to wet it, raise the grain, let that dry, sand it down smooth, wet it again, raise the grain and let that dry and then it will be ready to use. My preference is of course to use the Medex panels because they won't warp and the uh, fresco itself sticks really well to that surface. So the first step is to determine what kind of gelatin you'd like to use. Uh, you can use these gelatins that are from the grocery store. However, the bloom, which means how firmly it sets up, can vary from batch to batch. And that's why I prefer to use uh, a pork gelatin that uh, we sell. The bloom is always consistent and because it's so fine, it swells in water quite quickly. To mix up the gelatin, you're going to place a tablespoon of it into some water. And to the water, put in a half a cup of water, and I've learned how much that is, it's about that much. Half a cup of water, and in this water, I want to mention, I have placed um, half a teaspoon of sodium benzenate and what sodium benzenate does is it acts as a preservative. Uh, it's in food, it's a safe product to use but of course you would keep it out of the reach of children because this is a big jar of it. Uh, but a, about a half a teaspoon and a quart of water and that's what I use in this process and it will inhibit any uh, mold growth in your gelatin. So in a half a cup of water you're going to add one tablespoon of the pork gelatin or the osin uh, store-bought food gelatin. Mix that up in the water and after about a half an hour this is going to swell up and become like applesauce. So you can see how that um, really sits up. That is the state at which you, we can heat this. Now this is going to go into a microwave oven for one minute. Again, the recipe is one tablespoon of gelatin to a half cup of water that has some sodium benzenate in it. All around this board so that the gelatin when we pour it will stay on the surface. I'm going to take some blue tape and tape it all around the edges. You're going to make two layers on all four sides. And when it's done, it's going to look like this. You're going to take a round edge of a pencil and press this down really tightly on all sides. We don't want the warm gelatin to be leaking out. Now, the next important thing is to make sure that this is level. And in order to level it, I'm going to place it on my table and it always helps if your table is level to begin with. That simplifies the whole thing and then you don't have to do this process. But I can see that this is level in the center here. Not quite level enough so I'll use a shim on this corner. The little trick that I learned is that leveling from three points is a lot easier than leveling from four points. So if you have a lot of leveling to do, remember that. Alright, that's nice and level. Now I've heated the gelatin in the microwave and you have to be careful not to get it over 140 degrees otherwise it won't set up for you. Uh, one minute in a microwave this heated up to about 125 degrees which is just about perfect. The uh, fresco of course needs to have this calcium carbonate in it. So I'm going to take this pre-wet 
uh, slaked calcium carbonate and I'm going to add three of these good sized spoonfuls to that mixture. I have found that that's just about the right amount to keep this um, white but not be too terribly thick for pouring. I've mixed this up really well and I've let it set for a few minutes. I want to check the temperature and a good temperature for pouring is right around 100 degrees. If you pour it any hotter what can happen is that the heat from the gelatin will seep into this tape and then cause it to delaminate from the side of your board. Calcium carbonate is mixed in really well into the warm gelatin and it is now at 102 degrees. That's a good temperature for pouring. If you pour it any warmer than that, you're likely to have the uh, well that you've made come off of the sides of the panel and then you're going to have this gelatin everywhere. Uh, I pour this through a strainer on the center of the board and I do that because it does two things. It filters out any bubbles, which I don't like to have in my frescoes, and it also helps me guide this across the board. So I'm going to start from the center and just pour it around. My studio right now is quite chilly because it is winter time, so I know that this is going to cool down pretty fast. However, I also have a refrigerator and I place my panels in the refrigerator and they will then cool down to below 65 degrees quite quickly. You're going to need a system to be able to roll down the print on top of the gelatin so that it lands on it squarely. I developed this alignment board system that seems to work for just about all of my transfer work. Before you start, make sure that your board is wiped clean of any dust and you can see there is dust on there because we're going to be positioning the print on here and we certainly don't want to have that dust picked up on the print. Now this is my image and it has been printed on the DOS uh, classic transfer film and I use the classic because it has a little less coating on it and it gives a cleaner release. The classic film has a white edge tape on it which you do want to remove. Be careful removing that that you do it very neatly in a slow motion. If you rip it off too fast you can wrinkle the uh, polyester uh, film and then you're going to have problems getting it down flat and smooth. What I do is I place my picture right over the area that I want it to land on and I've made my image about an eighth of an inch larger all the way around so that I have plenty of room uh, to make sure that my edges are all covered. So just take your blue tape and tape that down to your alignment board. So now we just turn this, oh and when you do this make sure that the dull side which has the ink on it is down um, you will make that mistake probably and have the shiny side down. I've done it enough times myself. Now just fold the uh, uh, film backwards. Let's add a little bit more tape here. Fold the film backwards and then you can move that out of the way. Now remember this is the same height. They're identical boards. However, I've put gelatin on top of that so now I know that this uh, needs to be raised up about a quarter of an inch so that it matches the height of the board after it has the gelatin on it. So I'm going to put that aside now. My gelatin has been cooled and is out of the refrigerator. Your studio does have to be at least 65 degrees for this to work. Before I got a refrigerator, um, I would turn my air conditioning on in my studio and cool the place down and put my boards on the floor to pour them. That got a little expensive, so I invested in a refrigerator that I could dedicate to this process. Well, this one has come out of the fridge and it is nice and firm. I can touch this and it's very bouncy. Uh, if I check the temperature of this board, it is at 57 degrees, which is just fine. 
you just don't want it to freeze. So I'm going to remove my tape and discard that. And then I simply line my board back up. And you can see now, this is exactly the same height because I've put a shim underneath here that's an eighth of an inch thick. This is about an eighth of an inch of the uh, gelatin on here, so this is going to work perfectly. Now to roll this down, oh, and I have a timer. This is going to be a three minute time. So I take a paint roller that has a, oh, I put a cover on it. This is a kind of a sleeve that you put on a, um, a cast if you break your arm, and that keeps my roller clean. So hold the film backwards, almost level, and you're not going to roll this roller. You're going to just push it forward and slide it so that the image makes good contact with the gelatin. Okay, then quickly remove the blue tape and then pull your boards aside. If you see any areas that it's not touching, you can go down and make these a little bit smoother in good contact. Because the gelatin has a little bit of a ridge in it, you're going to get these really interesting variations on the edges. I'll turn my timer over and wait uh, three minutes to take this off of the uh, gelatin and then we'll have a perfect transfer. Just take the film from a corner and pull diagonally across. I like to keep my other hand on the far corner so that I don't have any chance that this is going to lift up. So the film is, comes off clean. This film now has two coatings on it. The base coat holds tighter to the film, so when your film comes off, it should still remain with this milky look to it. If it's totally clear, you've transferred both of those coatings, which is um, okay too. But this is now our finished fresco. If you direct a fan right to this surface, what's going to happen is that it will dry unevenly and too fast. And if the top dries first, then it's going to crack. So you just want to move air through the room while this is drying. So a floor fan from the other side of the room or an oscillating fan that tips upwards, uh, that will do the trick. Well, this is the dry panel. Uh, it's thoroughly dry overnight here where I live. If you live in a more humid climate, it might take more than a day for this to be totally dry. One way to test that is if you feel it and it's cold, there's still some dampness in it, so give it a little bit more time. Once it is dry, take a 320 grit sandpaper around a block, protect the center uh, with a piece of paper so you don't get your handprints in there, and then sand off all these edges and the corners. This will give you a nice reveal around the image that is uh, the tan color of the Medex board. If you would like, you can also paint the sides of the Medex before you do this sanding so those edges would be black and then the reveal would be this nice tan color. So you're going to just sand it all really well. If you are working on large panels, you might want to take this outside and do a random orbital sander on the edges. That's a little bit faster and uh, easier to do. I did take this outside and finished it with a random orbital sander. When you do that, you get a nice reveal of this white, like a penciled edge around the image. Uh, I also uh, sloped it on the edges so that I would have a bit of the tan reveal of the Medex board. I like that because it really sets the image off very nicely uh, and makes it uh, something that you can frame without putting a frame over the edge. After you're done sanding, uh, take a cloth and dust the surface really well because the next step is going to be to wax it to seal it. I use Renaissance wax. This is a wax that's been widely used in the uh, photography industry and by museums for providing an excellent moisture proof, uh, fingerprint proof surface on many art materials and art images. 
I'll just apply it across the whole surface. Be sure and cover the edges. And if you'd like to, or I usually do this too, is I wax the outside edge so that I get an even tone to the Medex in case I want to display this by just putting a hanger on it. The Renaissance wax is widely available in many good art supply stores. This only takes a few minutes to dry. Once it's dry, take another lint-free cloth and buff the surface. This wax will also add a little bit of richness to the color and deepen the blacks just a tiny bit. It gives a very soft luster finish to the piece without looking like encaustic. And that's it. Now, the next step is to decide how you're going to display these. Some people like to just display these mounted on a wall this way because the edges uh, are very nice and finished. I prefer to use what's called a floater frame. A floater frame allows you to still have the reveal of your piece show and also to set it off with a nice black frame. These floater frames are available in natural woods and colors. I kind of like the black on most of mine. It looks great in a show. The process is really easy to do. There are a lot of variations on it and I'm going to show you now a few examples of additional work that has been done with this fresco process using gelatin. There are variations that use black cloth that's dipped in the gelatin. There are ones I have done using a uh, graphite that's mixed in with the gelatin. You can add mica and pearl pigments. You can add coffee uh, sprinkled on top after you do it. L there are lots of things that can be done with this process to make each and every piece an individual piece that you will enjoy. Thank you for watching.